What's up, everybody? It's me, Ronald Young Jr. Thank you, thank you so much for listening to Leaving the Theater. I really appreciate your support. And I'm here to tell you about another way that you can support the show, and that's through Patreon. Patreon is a service that allows listeners like you to directly support our work by contributing every month. Your contributions really, really help. They help pay for studio costs. They help pay for our engineer. It helps pays for gas and movie tickets. And the more contributions we receive, the more we can do for you, our loyal listeners. And we are trying to take Leaving the Theater to the next level. We really want to do big things. We want to go on a national tour. We want to look at old movie theaters. We want to do a live show. We want to do a holiday-themed live show. We want to do a lot. And we can only get bigger if you continue to support us. And your support comes with benefits. There's so many benefits. You get Leaving the Theater swag. And depending on what level you contribute, you can even suggest movies for us to review. You also get access to the Nope Extended episode. That's on there right now. If you sign up today, you'll get that today. We discuss spoilers. Uh, and even today's episode, Bodies, 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 we discuss that with spoilers and you have access to that on Patreon right now. We even have lost episodes of Leaving the Theater coming to Patreon, including Black Widow, which was an episode I did with my guest co-host, who was my Tinder date. So check out the chemistry on that one when you get a chance. So please, 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 when you get a chance, go to patreon.com slash leaving the theater. It's just like it's spelled right here on the podcast device you're listening to right now. Again, that's patreon.com slash leaving the theater, or you can just click the link in the show notes. Thank you so much for your support. and. Thanks for listening. Now, let's start the show. It's a pretty basic premise. A bunch of young people at a remote location, alcohol and drug use abound. Then there's a storm, and then an unseen force starts taking them out one by one. This is how Bodies, Bodies, Bodies starts. But this is not exactly a story you've heard before. I'm Ronald Young Jr. and I'm leaving the theater. Check, check, check. All right, this is Ronald, and I am leaving the theater after seeing Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Directed by Helena Regen, written by Sarah DeLapp, starring Amanda Steinberg, Maria Bacallo, Mahala Harold, Chase Sweet Wonders, Rachel Sennett, Lee Pace, and Pete Davidson. The goat, as I call him. All right, I am out here in these streets, and I'm not alone. I'm accompanied by one of my most illustrious guests. We haven't heard from him in a very long time on this show, but here he is, back like he never left. He is the host of Talking Loud and Saying Nothing. I know him as Michael Jefferson, but you all might know him as Mass Potential. Welcome to the show. Hey, hey, happy to be here, happy to be back. Great, all right. So, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is a horror comedy, it's a slasher, starring Gen Z folks with a, a lot of Gen Z themes. Basically, a group of Gen Z folks go to this house during a hurricane, they're gonna have a hurricane party, they get a bunch of alcohol, they get a bunch of drugs, uh, and they kind of, after that, chaos kind of ensues uh, because it's a party, and the party kind of gets out of hand. So we're gonna talk about this uh, without spoilers, but if y'all subscribe to the Patreon, there will be a part of this that we'll talk about after the credits with more spoilers. So if you want that, you can go to the, uh, you can go to Patreon to get that. But we're gonna talk about this as much as we can without spoilers. Mass Potential, AKA Michael Jeffrey, Young Jeffrey, what did you, <laughs> what did you think of this movie? I started off not caring about it, and then slowly started to care about it, and by the end, I was, I was, I was there. I was, I was involved. 
Yes, this this movie, I feel the exact same way. It was very slow to begin with. Uh, it was, as a matter of fact, they're like, they're, you know they're building to something. Yeah. You can see something is amiss. And I'm trying to figure out, and, and you know, I don't watch horror movies. I know you do, I don't. Okay, and I remember watching this being like, this doesn't feel like a horror movie at all, but it seems like they're trying to convince us that something is coming, but I don't, I don't see anything. What did you think of that? Um, I, I agree. I feel like there was it, there there was elements of it being a horror film, but it, it felt very like like we were just watching some people do stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it was unorganized, and so that's why initially I wasn't interested because yeah. it just was kind of boring. Yeah. But I feel like now looking back to when I was uninterested, in the mindset of me afterwards being very interested, I, I, I think it did well. I think it, I, I, I don't know. I think it did well. This is a movie, and I think I, I've noticed that a lot of properties are seem to be going back to mysteries, which I appreciate, like stuff that really makes you work. Um, there really isn't, it's funny because I think this is being billed as having a twist ending. I don't really think it was much of a twist as, as like, and it's not a twist in the traditional sense of the ways that we think about twists. We'll put it like that. It's not like, oh my God, it was the butler the whole time. It's yeah. nothing like that. But it is very, it is very of uh, this era, as we say. And it's really hard to talk about this movie without spoiling it, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will say, let's talk a little bit about the Gen Z elements. I tried hard to get a Gen Z on this show. Shout out to Dan Concha and Alex Ketch. Uh, but I did try to get a Gen Z on this show just to get a, 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 a their impression of what they thought of like the acting and the people that we were seeing and kind of the representations they were doing to Gen Z. You're an elder millennial like me. Uh, what did you think of uh, the Gen Z representations in this movie? Um, it, I, I felt like those those elements kind of made it more real. Yeah. Like I cared about it more because they didn't rely on the typical stuff. Instead of having flashlights, they were all using their phone as a flashlight, yeah. right? And that's what you would do. Nobody yeah. would, I don't even have, I probably have a flashlight in my house. Yep. No idea where it is. I've got one in my car. I know <laughs> for a fact I got one in my car. Yeah. And if I need to look for something in my car right now, I'm gonna use my phone. You know what I mean? What if you needed to find your flashlight right now? What what would you use? My phone. Exactly. <laughs> uh, did you ever fear that the phones were going to run out? Did you notice that that never became a plot point? I And I appreciate that so much because that would have been such an easy plot point. Yeah. That would have been so easy. Yeah. And I was waiting for that to be the case. Yeah. And the longer it wasn't, the more relieved I was. So at one point in the movie, they start playing this game called Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. And it's exactly, it's just like those of you that play Among Us or played Assassins or played Werewolf, any of those games. It's just one where every one person's a killer and you got to run around the house killing everybody and so and then you kind of discuss after each round you turn off the lights you discuss after each round but at one point the lights at the power actually goes out and they're actually using their phones uh as flashlights and you're absolutely right it seemed like it would have been like I, I don't know. It seems like I'm, I'm actually sitting there thinking about it. I'm just like, yeah, I guess it had absolutely zero utility in this movie for the power to go out because especially when you get to what's actually happening, because when you get to what's actually happening, it's like, oh, oh, OK, I guess that wouldn't have made any sense because it's like what like what what use would that have been? Uh, did any performances stand out to you? Um. Well, I only knew, I only recognized two of the actors, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I only recognized two of the actors, of course. Um, I think Amandala did, I, I feel like Amandala was not acting. I feel like that's what she is like on a Tuesday. 100%. Um, and Pete Davidson wasn't acting either. No. Uh, he was just Pete, and Pete Davidson on a Wednesday, yeah. the day after yeah. Amanda. Yeah. So I don't, honestly, I don't, I didn't see a lot of like acting happening, yeah. which I appreciated. What I will say, here's what I, I I'm going to do the thing where yeah, you no, no, probably have some, okay. So it. here's what I would say. I feel like the, there wasn't really a plot. I feel like, or maybe there was, but it wasn't, it, I appreciated this movie because of what was happening outside of the plot. Like it felt very just people freaking out in the house. Yeah. It didn't seem like there was like no like normal, like the normal themes you would see in a horror movie. Yeah. They were like vaguely there because you have to do those things in order to do a horror movie. Yeah. But like it was really just friends freaking out and then all accusing each other like you would expect to be happening. It, the dialogue was very, I don't know, it just felt, it felt very like, like I was watching something happening in real life as opposed to watching a contrived movie. I think, okay, so I think, and I, I, I appreciate you saying that because for me, uh, I, I think I was sitting there and I was like, this is very much a horror movie about the things that we don't say to each other <laughs> and about the things that we like kind of keep uh, like under wraps yeah. that we're not actually, when we're mad at each other, but we're not saying why and mm -hmm. resentment is building. And this is very much, I think everyone, you probably too, everybody's been to a party where 
people like even if it wasn't everyone at the party but there's a couple of people that were there weren't expected to see each other they started playing nice then they started drinking a little bit and they blew up on each other about something that happened like a couple months ago i loved her how could you do this like That's that type a really of thing good point. Yeah, but it seems like in this movie it happened across everyone attending the party. So imagine you're going really to a party that happened to everyone. This yeah. is a movie about bad friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this yeah, was yeah. just a movie about bad friends. Yeah, yeah. It could have been a romance, it could have been a comedy, it could have been a horror. Yeah. It literally could have been, I think, I, I think now that you say that, yeah. I think that's why I like this movie. Yeah. Because it was really just a movie about bad friends. And yeah. I feel like more people could relate to that. I feel like people who don't like horror or don't like comedy even yeah. would still be like, but I, okay, yeah. okay, I could, yeah, you know what I mean? It's a clever idea, though, because by, by basing it in this party, by doing it with young people, and especially by the way that they're using the language of psychology to kind of therapize each other at this party, like, you're silencing me, and <laughs> you're emotionally abusive, yeah. and you're gaslighting me, and mm -hmm. all that. For them to use all those phrases, they really were lampooning kind of the ways in which that we think that we have some sort of depth yeah. in our relationships now, yeah. but we're really just kind of like wantonly throwing accusations at each other that's the movie that's what it is we're just throwing accusations at each other yeah just accusations like back and forth yeah. and i think that's kind of what like that's kind of where it settled for me at that point but that's all before you get to the air quotes twist yeah that's true and i yeah this this is real this, so this is a good movie <laughs> no i liked this it i think yeah, yeah no i don't think there was any debate i think this it was, was a very good movie, good movie. yeah you know, what, you know what i was kind of relieved and i'm gonna say this as like like i don't i've not seen like every movie amanda has ever been in yeah but it the way it started it was boring yeah and then when they started playing the game can, can we talk about the game for a second yeah we can talk about the okay game. the game was dumb yeah the rules didn't really make that much sense no. and it seemed boring yeah it seemed like a boring game yes uh it seems like a game you have to get drunk and high to play yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yeah. so so at, at that point i was like amanda love participated she must need to check <laughs> like, yeah. like why would she participate in this yeah. but when you get towards the end i'm like this is right up her alley. Yeah. This makes like if she I'd be surprised if she didn't write and produce this. Like this this is hers. This is her shit. In a lot of ways this looks like a B movie. It yeah. looks very much like a stupid like and I'm talking <laughs> every actor has one of these in their in their repertoire. Mm -hmm. Some stupid movie they did when they were young and it's yeah. about partying and drugs or and it's some stupid slasher or it's like a a dumb romance. It's just something stupid and pulpy. And then by the time he gets to the end I was like, "Oh, they Oh, okay. Okay. Y'all, y'all did, y'all did some work. Like they, they, it was like very clever writing, like in this movie. Uh, and in a way that like, I mean, just when you get to the end, we're, we're all here for it. You're right. At the same time, there's a, uh, there's a conversation and one of the climaxes of the, the climax of the movie is of a conversation that is had between four people in which a lot of secrets are revealed in rapid succession. And I think that's kind of like where I started being like, oh, so this movie is really just about the accusations more than it is about the who actually did it. It's about us holding on to these suspicions that we have against each other and then it, it going across the house. But they're doing it while this very real murdering is happening <laughs> in the house. But it's like in the meantime, it's also like, yo, I'm mad at you about this shirt thing that we never talked about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, spoiler, the spoiler free version of my comment here is that it, um, I, it's not a, it's, so it's not a conversation that I've ever participated in myself. Like I've never been in a relationship with friends where like each pair of friends in the like five or six, they each have their own secret behind each other's backs. Yes. And so it was nice, even though we really didn't have a lot of insight into any of this until that moment, yep. like there was some things like, oh, why is she here? And stuff like little comments like that, yeah. that if they hadn't paid off, we wouldn't have cared about them anyway. Yes, but so some of that was resolved, but a lot of this st was stuff that we wouldn't have known yes. anyway. Yes. And it was still in it was still thoroughly entertaining to see. And it, and it's funny because even the thing you're talking about in the beginning, uh, there's very much like when uh, when Amanda Steinberg's character shows up to the house, she shows up late and it's revealed through a, a series of, you know, exposition that she was in rehab and she had kind of uh, checked out from the friend group. So a lot of that is happening. and. As a result, like when she walks up to the party, she gets a bunch of look awkward looks from people like, yo, what are you doing here uh, type things. And you're absolutely right. We would have never I would have thought that was like completely gone. But it turns out to be like important to the plot, yeah. which I'm like, that's that's incredible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, how, how did you make this matter all of a sudden in a way that it like maybe shouldn't have maybe wouldn't have? You know what I mean? And I think I think what now that I think about it, I think what was well done was that a lot of the stuff in the beginning that I, again, that I say is was boring or didn't make a lot of sense or wasn't a lot, didn't grab a lot of attention. 
at the end, I remember just enough of that to yep. still care. Yep. So when I didn't care about those people, I still I still grabbed some crumbs yeah. or at least enough yeah. so that at the end where the at the payoff in quotes, quotes, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, it was still fruitful. I, it wasn't like, oh, I don't remember that because that didn't make any sense in the beginning. Yeah. It made just enough sense for me to hold on to it towards yeah. the end. Yeah. And I wonder if that was on purpose. Like, I wonder if I wonder if it was written and directed that way. So it's like, so. hey, I don't think people are going to care about this part, but let's just drop just enough so that when this pays off, they're glad they remember. Yeah, I think this is one upon a second watch that I'd be like, oh, yeah. probably a little bit more. Um, with all of that being said, uh, out of five stars, what would you give this? I don't know, cause you're aggressive. You're an aggressive raider. You, you you'll gotta, you'll love a movie and give it a two. <laughs> man, you gotta <laughs> wait, wait. Do not, do not, don't come for me on my show. Do not come for me on my show. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta make them work for it, man. Cause I'll be listening to your to your episodes and I'll listen to you say these amazing things and then give it like a three. And I'm like, wait, what's the, what is the scale? So okay, one out of five. Yeah. Personally, Michael Jefferson score, I'd give it a a four. I'd give it a four. Uh, you know, <laughs> Michael Jefferson is walking away from me right now because I paused. Um, leaving, leaving the theater. So I'm thinking about it and I'm like, OK, I, I have to consider it a bit versus the movies that I've most recently seen and thinking about those versus this one. In terms of this being a completely original idea, uh, them doing something that's, you know, actually like it, it was original. It was fresh. It wasn't something that we've seen before. They used the trope that we saw before to kind of tell us something new and to say something new about it and use a lot of the language and mo modern, use a lot of the modern lens of today in order to tell that story. Uh, and with all of that in mind, I also give it a four. I give it a four or five stars. So we're on the same page. Wow. wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So I get it now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I get yeah. it. I get it. I think this movie was, I think it was a great movie. I think, um, like, I, you know, I've seen this and I've seen Nope, uh, which I think I also gave four stars to Nope. And I think uh, these were these were both good, solid movies. And I think, like, maybe I'm, and maybe people are listening to this being like, I didn't like it, and they, they won't like Bodies, 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 and they're like, Nope. But I will say, for me, originality is like giving people an extra point at this point right now, because maybe those would have been three-star movies if I had seen it before. But now I'm seeing stuff that I haven't seen before in an era of Marvel, which tells me that originality and real ideas are still out there. And I think that, for me, that's very exciting about, about movies. So, uh, yeah. Any, any, any last words before we get to the spoilers? Yeah, absolutely. So now that I understand the rating system, there's actually a new podcast coming out called Rolling Out of the Movies, uh, hosted by Michael Jefferson. And uh, so stay tuned for that. Available everywhere, but everywhere you get your podcast. <laughs> and with that, Leaving the Theater is a production of Oh, It's Big Ron Studios. Thomas Tyra of Bias Studios mixes the show. Thank you, Tom. Show art from Katie Helm. Theme music by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. For more information about Michael Jefferson, a.k.a. Mass Potential, or Bodies, 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 check out our show notes. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at oh, it's Big Ron. That's at O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N. You can find out more about this show and other Oats Big Ron Studio shows by following us on Instagram at oh, it's Big Ron Studios and on Twitter at oh, it's Big Ron Stew. That's S-T-E-W. Leaving the Theater will be back soon. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned. We'll see y'all next time. You can't see a podcast next time. Okay. I don't, <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that at all.